Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and I'm a first year dental student at Harvard. And today I'll be chatting with you about a section that for many students is initially one of the most difficult and daunting aspects of the dental admission test. And that is the perceptual ability test or the PAT. So I'll start this video first by giving you a quick overview of the section so you know what to expect. I'll then talk about the six question types that you'll see on the PAT. And then finally, I'll share some of my best advice and strategies with you for studying for and acing this section. And along the way, I'll be highlighting some of the features on Crack the DAT that helped me a lot when I was studying for this section a little bit over a year ago. So whether you have no idea what the PAT section is yet, whether you've just started studying, or whether you've been studying for this section for a while, but just need some new advice and new strategies, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. So diving right into our overview of the PAT section, because before you start studying, you definitely want to know what to expect. So the PAT is the second section of the dental admission test following the survey of natural sciences. And for the PAT section, you'll have one hour to complete 90 multiple choice questions. And there are six different question types. So you'll have 15 of each of those different question types. All right, so onto our overview of the six different PAT question types, and we're starting with keyholes which is questions one through 15 of the PAT. So in the keyhole section, based on images of 3D objects, like the image you see pictured here at the left, it'll be your job to choose which opening would be a perfect fit for that object if that object were inserted or passed through it. So you can imagine much as a key is a perfect fit for the lock that it's designed for, it'll be your task to determine which of these openings would be a perfect fit for that 3D object were that 3D object to be passed through it. Questions 16 through 30 of the PAT are top front end questions. So every 3D object has a distinct view depending on whether you're viewing it from the top, from the front, or from the end. So to demonstrate that, I'll be using a cup as a simple example. So imagine if you were viewing this cup from the top down. So if you were viewing it from that angle, you would see a circular sort of projection. But if you were viewing the cup from the front or from the side, you would see almost a square sort of projection. So that's the idea in the top front end section. You'll be provided with two of those three possible views for a 3D object. So for example, you might be given just the top view and the front view. And from that, you'd be required to determine what the missing view would look like. So essentially, from the two views that you're given, you're able to form a mental picture of that object in your mind. And then using that mental picture, you can figure out what that missing view of the object should look like. Moving right along to questions 31 through 45, angle ranking. So in the angle ranking section, you'll be presented with different angles, which may be acute, obtuse, right, or anywhere in between. And it'll be your task to rank the angles from smallest to largest. So this section really just tests on whether you can pick up on small differences in angle size. So questions 46 through 60 are hole punching questions. And in the hole punching section, a square piece of paper will be folded multiple times, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, or a combination of all of those. Then one or multiple holes will be punched in the paper, and then that paper will be unfolded. So you'll need to figure out what the pattern of hole punches would look like on the unfolded paper. Questions 61 through 75 are cube counting questions. So for cube counting, you'll see different structures formed by different arrangements of cubes. And then you'll want to imagine that the entire exterior of the structure is painted. So the questions will ask you how many cubes would have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for all six of their faces painted. And something interesting to note about the cube counting section is that you'll have multiple questions corresponding to a single figure. So we finally reached the last PAT question type, and that's pattern folding. So for pattern folding, you'll see a 2D template or pattern, and you'll need to determine what each pattern or template would look like were it to be folded up into its corresponding 3D figure. And a lot of these templates have unique shading and unique designs, so you'll need to keep those in mind when you're picturing what that final 3D object would look like. So that wraps up my pretty quick overview of the PAT and its different question types. But if you'd like to learn more about the PAT, or if you'd like to read more about any of the other sections in the DAT, you can check out our section guides and section breakdowns on our pre-dental blog. So you can check that out at dentaladmissiontest.medium.com.
My first piece of advice is do not get discouraged. And I know this is a hundred times easier said than done, but it really is true. Keep in mind that for almost everybody, the PAT is something that is so new, it's so unfamiliar. It's a skill set that you really haven't used before. So don't let that make you feel discouraged or make you feel like you're just not going to improve. I promise you with practice, with time, with learning the different strategies, you really will start to see progress and it'll start to make sense to you. And if it makes you feel any better, the first time I took a diagnostic test for the PAT, I was told that my predicted score was less than 12. So essentially my score was so low that they actually couldn't even give me a specific numerical score. I was just told that it would be less than 12. But with practice and with time, I really start, started to see improvement. So I suggest that you first start by taking a diagnostic test. And Crack the DAT has one that's only 13 questions long. It's a really quick way to get a sense of what question types come a bit more naturally to you and which ones you struggle a little bit more with. And then use the results of that test to make a plan. So don't let the results discourage you at all, no matter what those results are, but rather use them to help guide how you study and what you study. So you can use the results of that test to see what you might want to focus a little bit more time on or what you need to focus a little bit less on. But above all else, don't be discouraged, even on the days when you feel that you're not making progress or it's just not clicking. I promise you that with practice and with time and with learning the strategies, it will all start to come together and make sense. So do your best to just keep the most positive mindset that you can. My next piece of advice, especially if you're just starting out studying for the PAT, is to start slow. And one feature that I find really helpful on Crack the DAT is the ability to adjust the length of time that you have to complete a practice test. So say I want to take a PAT practice test, but I don't think that I can complete the test within the usual 60 minutes. Totally fine. I can adjust the length of time, say I need 80 minutes, and then I will be given 80 minutes to complete the section instead of the usual one hour. This is really helpful initially, especially when you're just starting out. I think it's so valuable to have extra time to really be sure you understand the questions, you understand what's being asked, you have time to visualize the objects in your head. And then from there, as you improve, as you start to learn the strategies and get better, the speed will come. So of course, timing is definitely important. You definitely wanna be sure that you can complete the PAT within the usual one hour time limit. But particularly when you're just starting out, it's very helpful to have the extra time. Okay, so I've mentioned the strategies many, many times. So my next piece of advice is to learn about the different strategies and test them out and see which ones work for you. The strategies are basically just different ways of approaching each question or visualizing the objects in your mind. And they can be really, really helpful for making the questions feel a lot more approachable and a lot more manageable. And especially if you feel that you're getting sort of stuck with one of the PAT question types, these different strategies can sort of help reframe the way you're approaching the questions. So for specific resources for strategies, I have two. First, on our website, crackdat.com, we have strategy guides for all the PAT question types. So you can see, for example, we have a strategy guide for keyholes with a lot of information about just how to approach the section and how to visualize these question types. So that was really helpful for me when I was studying. We also, as I mentioned earlier, have a lot of resources and strategies listed on our pre-dental blog. So that's dentaladmissiontest.medium.com, as I mentioned earlier. And for all of the PAT question types, we have different ways that you can visualize the questions. So for example, for angle ranking, we have plenty of different ways that you can sort of visualize the angle ranking questions. Um, and a lot of these for me were so helpful because initially when I approached this section, all the angles looked the same. But then after testing out different strategies, I saw that many of them worked for me and sort of helped me figure out when I was stuck, you know, which angle was smallest and which was largest. So test out the different strategies see if there are even one or two that work for you. And then when you're taking your practice tests, put those strategies to work and you'll see that you get a lot faster and a lot more accurate with your PAT questions. Tip number four is to practice. And I know you are probably so tired of hearing that, but honestly, if I could only give one piece of advice to someone who is studying for the PAT, it would be to practice because that really is the best way to improve your speed and your accuracy and to test out all the different strategies. 
So I have two specific resources that were so helpful for me when I was practicing for the PAT. The first and probably the most valuable in my opinion are the PAT generators. We have generators for all of the question types and they offer essentially unlimited practice for all of these questions. And something great about them is that you get instant feedback. So when you take a full length PAT test, you only see the answers at the end. Whereas when you do a generator, you get instant feedback. As soon as you answer the question, you know whether you got it correct or not. And this is so helpful for learning. And the generators are also great because there's something that you can do whether you have five minutes and you're in a rush or whether you have more time. So I recommend incorporating the generators into your studying and making them a really big part of your PAT practice. Second, and something that's a little bit different and fun, is the PAT trainer game. So when I was studying, this was something that I did maybe every day at the beginning to every other day when I was studying for the PAT. And the PAT trainer game is interesting because although it doesn't directly relate to the six question types, it's a really great way to sort of refine your eye and just start to practice your perceptual skills even more. Last but not least, tip number five is to practice on the go. This is super simple. You can download the Crack the DAT app on your phone, and then whenever you have any spare time, so if you're waiting for the bus somewhere, you're in transit, you have a little bit of time in the evening, pull out the app, and then you can practice the generators and access all of the resources on our website from your phone. So for me, this was incredibly helpful. When I had a little bit of downtime, I was able to just practice. And even if you're just fitting in an extra five, 10 minutes each day, that really starts to add up over the many weeks that you study for the DAT. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away a few valuable lessons from my own experience taking the PAT. I want you to know that you have the support of our entire team on your side and that the DAT is just one more step on your path to becoming a dentist. So really, if you put your mind to it, you will succeed and you will be able to achieve that dream. If you have any questions at all for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks so much.